All right, welcome to this episode of Matt's Towing and Recovery. This is our question and answer section. There's a lot of hot questions that I see all the time, and I don't have time to answer every single one of them, so we're going to make this video to answer them. There's also a couple questions I get, maybe even not very often, but I feel like they need to be answered better than just something I could type. So, so the first question and comment I get all the time is something along these lines. What are these people doing clear out there all by themselves? They've got to be up to no good. They got to have just buried a body or whatever. This is a tourist destination and we have amazing land features in every direction from here. And people come from all over the world to see it. Zion is the big draw, but there is lots of other places around. And so people fly in from wherever, they rent a car, they see something on the internet that they want to go find, they type it into their GPS, and they drive their car till it gets stuck. That's what they're doing out there, they're tourists. And then a lot of comments on, oh, they're from California, no wonder, that explains everything. No, they're from Tennessee, they flew to LA, they went to Universal Studios, then they drove up here in, uh, in their California plate car and got stuck wherever. And it doesn't matter. They could be from all over the world or from any state. I don't know what else to say about that. I just think it's funny that people instantly will judge somebody by their license plate, not realizing they could be from all over the world. So why are people out there everywhere getting stuck? What are they doing out there? They're lost. I think half of them just wandering around. The GPS don't show them the right location and they take the wrong turn and they just get stuck. All right, the next question I get all the time is they're like, these people are surrounded by other people out there. Why are those other people not helping them get unstuck? Like where we live, everybody helps everybody. The truth of the matter is I probably tow out one vehicle for every thousand vehicles that get rescued. And the private individuals do help other people here, just like they do wherever you're from. But there's that fraction of 1% that they're either surrounded by somebody who's unwilling to help, but more likely they're surrounded by somebody who is unable to help. Because they're also in a rental car that the previous renter stole the jack out of, or something like that. It's these people are out here without any recovery equipment. And so there's not a lot of help um, to be offered simply because nobody has the gear and more than likely they also don't have any experience in it. So I've, I've been to, in situations where there was easily enough people around to push the car out, but they didn't know that they could even do that because they, they weren't familiar with any type of recovery situation even the most basic of getting out and pushing, which sounds strange, but not everybody's had the same background and experience, so. Uh, they don't have a good enough rig. They need a Jeep like Matt had. I get a lot of comments about my tire pressure and how much tire pressure do I run. I put it in some of the videos. I'm running nine pounds all the time. I'm not, my shop's not very far from the sand dunes. It's not worth it for me to air up and air down. What about the customers? Why don't I air their tires down? It's a liability issue for me. So if anything happens to that tire in the next month after I aired it down and aired it back up, they're gonna come back to me for, I found that it's easier for me if I just adjust my driving technique and my tire pressure and get that vehicle back on hard pack and send them down the road. So I get asked a lot of times, why did I pick a Jeep Cherokee to do off-road recovery? It seems like it's barely getting the job done. And you're right, it is barely getting the job done, but that puts it ahead of everything else that I've tried. And I'm not the only one that's tried this business. The reason I landed on the Jeep is I like the packaging. It's a lot of dry storage. It's light. It's got a good drivetrain that I can keep running. It's easy for me to modify and upgrade for what I needed. And it's uh, the right price. They're really, they're really affordable compared to some of the other things. 
it is the correct tool. It's not intuitive. It's not something you would guess instantly is the best tool for the job. But we've been doing this for a long time and there's others in the area that's been using the Jeep Cherokees for the same purpose that I use mine. And it's the right tool. It, they're fast and they're light and you can add another one in, inexpensively. I, I have to get three Cherokees on a job before the price is the same as one four wheel drive record. So it's far more economical for the customer and it's faster for us, it's less downtime for us and we're not taking a $130,000 rig out there into the sand, we're taking a $5,000 rig out in the sand. Maybe we'll take two $5,000 rigs in the sand. But I have to have a lot of Jeeps before it equals $130,000 worth of equipment in the sand. Why do we use a Jeep Cherokee instead of something else? That I don't really know, except it's just fixed up real good to work and work in the sand or the snow. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about the sand we have here. So beach sand is coarser than the sand we have around here. Not only is it coarser, but the grains are actually shaped differently. So the sand that we have here is called blow sand. People call it blow sand or they'll call it powder sand. Powder sand really explains what it's like, but the, gra the granules are round. If you've done a lot of driving on the beach and you watch these videos and you, 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 know, you may have some good advice. I've noticed the beach, the people that drive on the beach always tell me to air down to 18 pounds or 20 pounds. But the guys that are used to this desert sand that we have here, the blow sand, they're like, you need to be at 10 pounds, you need to be at eight pounds. And they're right, we've got to go much lower to, to navigate this sand. Do you think our sand is a little bit worse here than other places? Oh yes, a lot worse. It's finer, it's just fine blow sand. and Everybody gets stuck in it. Here's one, is Ed your dad? No, Ed is not my dad. Um, Ed is a friend, I met him in 2009 and he's just a good guy to have around. He's, he's valuable to me, not only in a business sense, but also as a friend. And um, he's been a lot of fun to, to get to know. Who is Ed? <laughs> Ed's just an old gold miner and guard dog. <laughs> All right, so the next question is my check engine light. And we, I shot this video before and it was kind of awkward because I was sitting on the couch. I decided it would be better in my natural habitat, which is behind the wheel of my Jeep with the soft amber glow of the check engine light on my face. So I am going to use that other video clip because I think I explained it pretty good in there. My check engine light is on. People alert me in the comments that my check engine light is on. They say, did you notice your check engine light is on? And yes. You should do it with that sarcasm. <laughs> nope, I'm doing this with sarcasm. <laughs> that engine light has been on for 150,000 miles. It's got at least three codes that don't mean anything. Don't mean anything to me. Um, so yeah, I wish the light would just burn out so I didn't have to address it anymore, but it doesn't bother me one little bit. And it shouldn't bother you. If, if, if you're a car guy, there's sometimes a check engine light means something, but almost always it doesn't mean anything serious. That's, that's the bottom line there. Moving right along. This is a really hot question that we get. Can you show us and give us driving tips in the sand? That's a hard one to answer, like a blanket statement. Obviously tire pressure is super important, but it's not the same result for different tire designs. The really popular large rim diameter, stiff sidewall tires that end up on the four wheel drive trucks, particularly the diesel trucks, airing those down does not help very much. And, but airing down is important. It depends on if you've got a four wheel drive or two wheel drive or front wheel drive vehicle on what exactly it is.
driving on the sand is going to be very vehicle uh, specific and tire pressure if if somebody gives you a universal tire pressure to run you'll know that they don't know a ton about it because tire pressure is also going to be vehicle and tire specific so um it's something you kind of got to do i i really believe you're just going to need some seat time and even me um have being around the sand dunes my whole life and learning how to read the sand dunes i still get tricked into driving places i shouldn't and needing some help so sand is just a, a tough nut to crack and we're working on it all the time uh, we're gonna be doing some videos on specific driving for vehicle specifics in the future so stay tuned for that okay do you have any driving tips for people in the sand yeah air down their tires and have four-wheel drive oh i believe this is the hot topic i think this is the number one question how much does this cost and i never answer if we have to add other jeeps i have a rate hourly rate for the jeep set rate for that also and me how much does it cost to get recovered by winter towing i don't know the exact amount it's so much an hour and some of it's hard we've had some hard times out there pulling them out with that spongy cord our summertime temperatures can be in the triple digits easily for weeks at a time so people ask me if the jeep has air conditioning and yes the jeep has air conditioning we keep it working in top condition does the jeep have ac yeah in a nutshell why don't we do the job better there'll be some question about i've even had a comment where it said if the cameraman put down the camera and pushed the job would have gone easier which is correct so i have to balance there's two reasons let's start this over People noticed that there is a better way the job could have been done. And like you, I can go back and watch these videos and I can see that there was something. It gets asked a lot of different ways and commented on a lot of different ways. But what it boils down to is why didn't you do the job better? And like many of you, I can go back and watch the video and I can say, oh, I didn't see this angle or... Or I, you know, there's some. Uh, we, if we would have done this differently, the job would have gone smoother. That's going to happen with anything in life. Um, so that's one aspect of answer for that question. The other one is we are balancing filming with doing a good job. So sometimes I have a guy there that could help the job go better. Like we could put them in the vehicle. A good example is the wheels on the bus. Um, I could have put Trevor or Eric in that bus and we would have lost the camera. There would have been no footage. Isn't there a better way we could be doing this? Not that I know of. It's just uh, the sand drifts out there and it's hard to find them. And a lot of times you can't find them. They leave their vehicle and, and walk away from it. And you can't find it. Tell us about that one on the Danish Ranch Road that we went up to. Oh, yeah, the guy side, left the vehicle in the middle of the road, took the keys, locked it up, and they went hiking. And we found it, and they spent an hour driving back and forth trying to find them, and finally found them and got the keys and got, got it out of there. But you always need to stay with your vehicle. Nice. Okay. Somebody that's Let's try the check engine light again. That. I don't care that it's on, but it's on. I don't know how to do this without being sarcastic. Why not a one ton? Four wheel drive, roll back that I'm putting these in what? Stop that. You don't like that. I oh, can cut it out. Talk. Uh, just. We, okay. I, if from Here. my point of view, you got to do it in a way it's like, hey, uh, if, okay. without getting defensive, just say, hey, you know, I've gotten some comments about... Yeah. Uh, okay, let's we'll start over. All right, moving right along the next day. It's movie magic. The reason I don't say the price is because...
the cost of services like this varies wildly between rural areas and metro areas, between different, you know, high, highly populated states versus low populated states. It's a fair price. We try to be very fair. We've been in business since 1977. We have an, an excellent reputation for being a very capable, service-oriented business that is fair to its customers. Keep watching and, and uh, get a lot of hats. That's what the main thing. You gotta have the hats to join the club. <laughs> All right, get a lot of that. <laughs> Food, pizza, and milkshakes. That's true. Is that the <laughs> secret to a long life? Huh? Is that the secret to a long life? I guess. A lot of junk food.